Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am here today with Natalie and with Misty because it is triple play day and we have three new ideas for you all based on the quatrefoil quilt. So join us for this tutorial. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I'm here with Natalie and Misty and it's triple play day. First, can we all talk about how we all showed up here in the same kind of hue of color? <laughs> peach day. Didn't even it's plan peach it. Peach day. No, we never plan it. And we show up like this. I think that's so fun. So today we have an awesome tutorial for you. It's three different ideas that are all based on the quatrefoil quilt. This is the original quilt. It is made up of these four blocks, four patches in the corners, and a sashing that runs through the middle. It's very fun, but wait till you see what we've done. So I'm going to start, and we're going to reveal my quilt right now. So Misty, if you'll right. help me take this down. Of course. And we'll get this. So here is my quilt. It's so pretty. So pretty. I can hardly wait to show you how to make this. So to make my quilt, you're going to need one packet of 10-inch squares, and we've used Pura Vita by Shayla Wolf for Anthology Fabrics. You're also going to need one packet of 10-inch background squares. In addition to that, you'll need one and three-quarter yards of background fabric. You're going to need four yards of accent fabric, and that also includes your four inch border. And your backing is five and a half yards of 45 or two and three quarter yards of a 108. This makes a quilt that is 79 by 91. So this was such a fun quilt to make. I can hardly wait to show you how. Let's take a look at the quilt behind me. So it pretty. looks different, really different from the other one. And the difference is so small, but I love how one little difference makes a striking, just a striking change. This is quilted with the Baptist fan, and I opted to, to have the white go over the black, then have the black come over the white. So when you're picking thread, just think about what you want to look. I want to show you the backing here because look how happy and fun that is. I love is. that. So it's that fan, the fan almost make it look like little sunshine. Sunrises. Yeah. 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 Little it sunshine. does look like suns. And I love a pop of happy color on the back. It just makes it really fun. It's beautiful. So the traditional quatrefoil block is made up of a middle square. And then you have four of these squares. Now the, to make these squares, we use the extra, an additional accent fabric and I cut four and a half inch squares out of that. And then what I did was I took two two and a half inch squares and I snowballed the two top corners. So to do that, what you can do is you can make, draw the line like this. I'm gonna draw the line for you, Natalie. Oh, thank you. We do have that diagonal seam tape uh, on our machine so you can follow along with that. You can press a line, whatever you'd like. But we are going to draw the line on this. And Natalie's gonna sew one on here on this corner and she's gonna sew directly on the line. So for those of you who wanna save that other little piece out here, just come over a little bit and sew again and cut in between. But once she's sewn that, we're gonna add the other square on so that it will be snowballed at the top like this. So Natalie, if you'll go ahead yep. and sew one of these on, because I have the three other ones done for you. Okay. And so this is the first of the block. No pressure, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. Follow the line. Follow the line. Got it. You got it. Now you want to trim that and sure. press it back, right? You yes. do. Before you add the if other. If you add the other one and you sew it down before you press it back, you'll have like a little fold in there mm -hmm. and you'll end up taking that part out. So it won't wanna, look quite how you want it to. You want to press it back and then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to add our two and a half inch square on the other side, staying on the top mm -hmm. and just sewing straight on this line. And this gives you a great cross over here so you will never lose that point. Yeah. Well, unless you take like half inch seams, which we hope you don't. <laughs> Not for this quilt. Not for no. this quilt. I'm getting better at using that scissor cut. Yes, you are. All right. <laughs> getting used to Give it. Give that a uh, press. You got it. And you're going to need four of those for each block. All right, there and it so is. And so we're going to put those in a stack. Now the other block is just four patches, but we have layer cakes. So I wanted to show you how I do four patches with a layer cake. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna lay it right along the edge of here. I'm gonna come in five inches and I'm gonna draw a line just like this. Now, Natalie, what I'd like you to do is sew on the outside lines and on both sides of this middle line right here. Okay. And so you wanna look and make sure that your layer cake is centered on there real nice. 
lined up and as good as could be. Up. Yeah, so she's going to sew down the sides and on both sides of the line we've drawn down the middle. Okay. This is a, just another way to make four patches. Obviously, you can cut them all into two and a half inch squares. You know, you could cut them into... It saves so much time, It though. does save so much time. <laughs> and it gives you a great deal of um, different blocks to choose from. Yeah. A lot of variety, which is fun. It really does. All right, she's almost there. She's got two done. You're going to make a big pile of these. We're going to cut these into strict sets, and you're just going to make a big pile of these so that you can mix up all of your four patches. And this is such a bright, fun, happy line. It's there just fun to fun to sew and I to see. I just kept those threads connected. Because... No, it's fine. I'll just clip them so it lays down flat. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on this edge right here, and I'm going to come in two and a half inches right along the edge, and I'm going to make a cut here. And then I'm going to come over and cut on the line. And then I'm going to cut another two and a half inches. And now you have all these long pieces like this. Now before we press them open, what I like to do is I just like to kind of turn these like this, leave them stacked up like this, and I'm going to come along and sew and cut these two and a half inches in right here. And that's going to give me a half segment for my core patch. So it's going to give me a piece that looks like this. Okay? And so you can do that to your whole block and you're going to then press them open, press to the dark side. Go ahead, Misty, give that a press. Of course. And, um, and then you'll sew those together like a four patch. And so I guess I don't have to cut all the rest of mix, these. Yeah. You just mix yeah, them all up these at ones, that point, right? Yeah. Then they're all just going right. to be mixed up. Because these would be the same since it's yep. from the same layer cake, but you would just mix right. it. So you're just going to go ahead and cut them all up and make a big stack of them. And you're going to do that to 32 of your 10 inch squares. All right. So here's a four patch like this. And one of the things I like to do when you're putting blocks that are supposed to be the same size together, I actually want to just lay a ruler on it and make sure that indeed it is four and a half inches because sometimes, you know, things might get a little wonky, you know, or like, um, you know, this one is great, but if you have one where the, the wing slips out a little bit. I did that with mine too. Or if it <laughs> slips in, even if you see one where it's like in a little far, you know, you know that you can still catch that in the quarter inch seam, but you know to watch for it. Exactly. All right, so the only difference between my quilt and the original quatrefoil is that I ran all my four patches the same direction and took out the sashing. That's literally it. I love it. And so I'm gonna put my four blocks together right here. Well, and your center is a four patch too. Instead my, of a oh, solid. my center is a four patch too. And so on this, you wanna make sure that your white peaks are to the outside. And then we're gonna line this up right here. Take this off. Whoops, I got a little four patch under here. All right. So these blocks are now all four and a half, and we are going to, so this is our block right here, and I laid my four patches all running the same direction. And so I'm gonna put my color up here. Now the quatrefoil, on the quatrefoil, they're like this, where the colors come into the middle. Yeah. But I'm gonna run mine all the same direction like this. So all the same direction, just like this. Oh, let's get a different one. And then a center block right here. So fun. And that's the whole quilt. And you did every block this way. Every block this way. And so, Natalie, if you want to sew these together, I'm going to hand these to you like this in, in, uh, in rows. We're going to sew these two sections together like this. All right. And don't cut in between. I know you're loving that scissor cut, but I don't will cut. not. <laughs> I will not. Just hold we will yourself off. Piece this block. Right. That little, uh, the, the seam flipped on me underneath. Oh, okay. Had to make sure then this lay one. that back down. I love this method of sewing things together because, wait, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> had to double check. I had a little panic moment. <laughs> I love this method of sewing things together because the thread kind of acts as pins for me. I love me, it too, yeah. And, uh, and it holds it together and you can literally just sew the whole thing together. That seam just keeps wanting to flip. That's right, you can handle it. I sure can. You're tough, you're tough. All right, now go back to the top row. Can I cut? Yes. Can I thread cut? Okay. Cut, thread cut now. <laughs> go back to the top row and add this four patch on the side, making sure it's going the same direction. Okay. Oh. 
I always want to say no pressure. It's intense pressure though when you're filming. You There's feel like something about when the cameras are on. Yeah. It just it does feel a little stressful. Just don't want to mess oh, it. Here's this one. <laughs> <laughs> and of course the white parts are going to the outside on the sides. I do think it's so fascinating when we do these triple plays and um, we make one little change yeah. and it's like <gasps> they look so different. Something so new. All right, I'm ready one. for that last four pat. I got it for you. And it also goes like this? Yep. Okay. All, everything, same direction. I'm trusting you. <laughs> I'm hoping I got these. Yep, I, do. I was hoping I'm, all of a sudden I'm like, did I do that block the same as this one? Yeah. Because it really doesn't matter which way they go. It matters that they go the same. All, all right. right, so now you have these pinned together. We're going to open them up, make sure it's right. And then you can just fold this over like this. Okay. And sew those together. Now I like to remember like my middle block that my seams are going to go and I just choose away, either out or in. And, uh, but I make that the same every time I come to a middle block. That seam is always going to lay in or it's always going to lay out. So you can nest them. What will Natalie choose? <laughs> what will she choose? What the mystery. I, choose? I think I chose out. All right. But I, I can't be sure because I just don't know. Which means the one you're sewing on goes in, which is easy. Yeah. And then you got that one more row on the other side. <laughs> Almost forgot the scissor cut again. There we go. Does your machine not have a scissor cut? Um, your personal? It does, but it's in a different place. Oh, okay. I don't usually use this type of machine, so okay. it's not... It's just not, nothing on this machine is natural for me. <laughs> this is the machine I use all the time, so it's real natural for me. All right, nope, you're going, yeah, these go in, okay. remember? I just wanted to, I lost where I was in the block for a minute. All right, she got one more block to go. You can tell how patient I am, can't you? <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm so slow. Oh, you're, you're fine. not. <laughs> Quilting slow takes and time. You know, it really does. And that's really a good point is that, you know, you see us put things together and they look like they go together so fast, but it does take it time. It takes time. Yeah. And it's a, it's a well, joyful one block journey. block does go together pretty fast. Yeah. But when you have to make yeah, then you have to them. make a bunch. <laughs> right. It's All beautiful. right. So let me show you how this fits in the quilt. You can see right up here in this corner, here's this block. And I literally just put them together one after the other. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of an octal illusion. Six by seven blocks down, seven rows of six. And because we've just taken out that sashing and turned our four patches and added one in the middle, you get a whole new idea. It's so fun. Well, I'm glad you like it. All right. So now, Misty, I think you're up, aren't All you? All right, let's go. All right. All right, so this is my quilt behind me. I called it Quatrefoil Shimmer, and it's really fun and quick to make. I really love how it came together. So let me show you what you're gonna need to make this is two charm packs, and I used Arcadia by Pippa Shaw for Figo Fabrics. You're also going to need one and three quarter yards of background fabric. I use Bella Snow. You need a half yard of accent fabric. This is apricot and one and a quarter yards of a dark accent and I used Peacoat. And then for your backing, you need three and three quarter yards or two yards of 108, which I did use this 108 backing because I liked it, but you know, it wasn't necessary because this quilt is only 57 square. So sometimes you just have to use the fabric you like. Sometimes you just do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so let me show you how to make this. Okay, so let's start by making this little center block and I just did kind of a square and a square. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna take one of our uh, five inch squares and where's our little ruler? And we're just gonna cut it in half both directions like so. And we are gonna sew one of those on each corner of a five inch square. So if you want to do that, Jenny, I'm happy to. And this five so, inch square is just cut you, out of our background fabric. 
and you left them five inches. I did, yep. And that means on the center part, you're gonna lose your points? Exactly. I decided I was okay with it. And All you right. can mark, you can draw a line on the back of those if that's easier, Yep, right? you could, totally. I just always use the diagonal seam tape. I do too, I just wanna make sure people, people know technically you are sewing on the line. Yeah, I'm just absolutely. sewing opposite corners. Yep, and then we'll trim these. technically, you can lay them all on that square and sew them. You can. But mm -hmm. it just felt a little risky today for some reason. That is fine. So we'll trim these off. And Nat, if you want to press those back. Sure. And then I'll add the two squares to the other side. Perfect. There you go, Jenny. And so by doing this, this is going to stay five about inches. five inches. Exactly. Okay. Your little square slid off the back. Oh, you got I it. I saw it. It was trying to escape. <laughs> it didn't want a bunch of needles in it. I was going to say it's running away. It's like, I'm going to make you beautiful. I'm going to make something beautiful out of you. That's right. That is really cute fabric, too. Isn't it such a cute line? It is a cute yeah. line. All right. Trim that one and that one. And then that, you can press it, and our middle is done. So then for the petals, you do need to pick um, from each of your charm packs. Remember, we have two. You want to make your petals out of the matching prints. So you need to have two matching out of each charm pack. So you have a total of and, four. And the to be, same. be uh, fair, not every charm pack has two pieces in it. So right. think about that when you're looking at a charm pack because you need yeah. four to make exactly. your block. Exactly. But we only have 16 blocks and usually they have at they least do. that many matching. So you should so be fine. So we're just going to take our five inch squares that match. And for this, we're using three inch squares um, for those snowballs. And I can draw a line like Natalie mentioned, or you can use your diagonal seam tape. And we're just going to, again, sew right on that line. Okay, perfect. Yep. And then we can add the other one once we trim it. I thought we were making a middle again, so oh. I was going to say I can put one on both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're on to the petals. Not this quilt. All right, there's that one. Awesome. We'll trim this. There we go. And now press. if you will press. You're yep. going to draw another line for me? Yes, I'd be happy to. <laughs> It was kind of fun to have the drawn line on there. You betcha. I just, we so rarely do that because we do these so often. And it you know. is exact. There we go. And it and is exact. Inter intersect that other one. And this way we will not lose our points because. Nope, we will not. We wanted to keep them on the petals. All righty, there you All go. All right, let's trim this one. you need one. four of those, right? Exactly. And I have the other ones already made. There you go, Nat, if you want to press that. Mm -hmm. You can see I have the, the other three matching ready to go. So we will just keep those oh, stacked well. up. Exactly. So now we're going to do this cool kind of stripey outside corner. And so to do that, I love it. you need, I believe this measures, is it five and a half? Yes, five and a half from both your background and that dark accent. And I've gone ahead and drawn a line here and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam on either side of that line. Because again, we wanna keep this block five, five inches. Five inches, that's okay. what we're aiming for, exactly. Awesome. It saves a whole step. Yep. And because it's all cut out of um, yardage, yardage. Yeah. you can cut it any size. Exactly. Want. The beauty. Which means in reality, you could have made this tiny. I could have made it tiny. It's <laughs> true. Did you see your heart just melt at the thought of it? <laughs> it's true. Made and if you would tiny. press those to the dark side. I sure will. It's beautiful though. Thank you. And I really like it. It is fun to see how just such little differences make a whole different quilt. It's true. I was going to say, if you find that you have a line you want to use that doesn't quite have enough in it, if you bought four charm packs, you would for sure have enough and just be able to make a bigger quilt. Exactly. Oh, true. It's true. And that wouldn't be, or even a layer cake. Yeah. yeah choose a, choose a layer cake and you can cut yeah, them you into could, the sizes you need. You could keep going. I just stopped here. And so. then, yeah, because when you need the, the ones that match, you know, you have to go yeah. in, in those numbers, but you're not always going to find one that has doubles. That's right. double true. Prints. That's true. So I do want to just square this up so it finishes at five. So I'm just using um, my five by 15 ruler, but it has the 45 line that I can put right on. I love seeing that. you do that with that ruler. That's very cool. <laughs> and then we'll just trim so that this stays nice and square. So that one is ready. 
And then I'll go ahead and trim and those, this one. You'd think this wouldn't add up, but it adds up it so does. fast. It does. And they're just not quite the same size. Yeah, it's always worth taking the time for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took me a long time to realize the value of squaring, but now I square everything. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Well, you just want things to fit together and lay nice. Right, because you want to enjoy the process. But I it's, seriously, yeah, I was going to say, that you can make them fit together yeah. and you can make them lay flat, but it, your, your sewing process is so much more pleasant when it's easy. It's, it's true. true. It just refines itself as you go along in your journey. It's yeah. so true. So now that we have these squared, we're gonna go ahead and uh, use that fun orange apricot color I chose. And we are going to set that on the corner of our navy side and we're just gonna snowball this again. So I can draw the line there for you. And we're gonna sew right on that line. <laughs> One more opportunity One for another more. tiny half square triangle. That's you true, want. you could totally <laughs> slide over if you want. These, uh, these look like they're three inch squares. Yeah. I think I said that. Did I not say that? I thought I did. I'm not sure. Okay. I might have missed it, but yeah. So these right. are three inch instead of two and a half. Okay. Three inch instead of two and a half. Do you want me to draw the line no, or good. you're good? Okay. I'm and good. We'll use this diagonal seam tape on the sewing machine. Perfect. And, and so then we'll trim this one off. And yeah. like they said, you could totally save these tiny little half square triangles if you did another row of stitching. Some, <laughs> some yeah. love to do that. And, and sometimes I just off them out. Exactly. I'll actually do that on this one so they can see what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, that'd be about. awesome. So I'm just going to come over, not probably quite a half an inch, sew another row, and then when Misty cuts in between those two, yep. you'll have a little, looks like maybe a two or two and a half inch half square triangle Leaves us this little one that's just waiting for another project, and then we can press this one back. And you know, we Perfect. do a lot of these flippy corners, and I was thinking the other day that, because I have baggies of different colors, uh -huh. and if I like threw them all in a jar. Yes, how cute would that be? How cute would it be? And they'd all be in one place. Yeah, because that's true. literally I save these kind of with the project, but uh -huh. I'm not really going to use them in that it's project. It's true, so. it's true. So now that's really it. You're going to need four of these made and we can just lay out our block. So remember this is our center and then our petals build out from there with the white on the outside, just like on Jenny's. And we just set it like so. And then our Stripey blocks go in the corners. Let me find my other ones here. And now we can just sew them together in rows. Now, nobody did this in our, uh, you know, our quilt off today, you yes. know, all of our different options. Mm -hmm. But I just want to show you this. If you turn these blocks around like they make this. make stars, yeah. It'll make a yeah, star. Yeah, we do have a quilt called Quatrefoil Star where yeah, we did that. where you did that. It's so cute That's though. why we couldn't just do it today. Turn, she had already done it. Just one turn <laughs> and you get this little star. So. It's so true. Uh -huh. I love that you showed that. these together this way. All right, so we'll turn them all back. I mean, I just can't help the what happens if. I know, it's the best. So you want me to sew this together? Yeah, let's lay these together. I'll do these two first. Oh, okay. And I then, always do these and then add the other one, but that is fine. And then that block fine. for me, it's on the right side it's for me. It's a okay. lefty thing. That is fine. Was it for you, Natalie, to do it this way? Well, I do mind the way Misty does. I go from the right to the left. I think it's right just left-handed left oh, brain, right-handed brain. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't weird, though. I no, mean, you, it still works out the same. Yeah. There you go. I do love that this block is intentionally um, cutting off the point. Yep, yes. I, I chose the, to do it. It just gives it a really cool rounded. Yeah, I wanted it to be like the center of a flower. And so I, I was okay with losing that point in the middle. It's purposeful. Yep. All right, go. so then I'm gonna come back up here and add this side one. There we go. Which, uh, all right. Add the next side. Here's this one. And it points out. And one more. Oh, I just oh, shouldn't no. have cut it. It's all right. It'll that was a habit. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. And one more. And then make sure this is lined up. And then we'll bring this up here and open it up. Yep. And now we can sew our rows together. We can sew our rows together. I'll flip this over so here. Cute. I love how I it really comes like together. this. I do too. I think it's really happy and 
kind of modern. It's just really, really fun. And I love the, like, it looks black a little bit, but it's navy. It's navy. It's a really it's a dark, really dark navy. Yep. I didn't know it was and navy April. until you said that. Yeah. I think it turned out really fun. And I love that yeah. when you set the blocks together, you get that secondary, you know, diamond. A diamond. I, yep. know, I love that. So that's actually a really fun thing, too, you know, for our whole what if thought process is that, you know, just doing that one, adding that one little snowball corner brings a whole another element of surprise. Yeah. All righty. Perfect. Home stretch. Now we can there press we it. Yay. All right. And did you, you didn't sash yours or anything? No, nope, no you? sashing, just a little um, two and a half inch inner border and bound it with the same. Can I just say, I love how this all I happens know. on the outside. It's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of magical, isn't it? It is magical because <laughs> it's not a plan. Yeah. But when it gets together, you're like, oh, this I, is the best. I know. So I, it just frames it with that that little chevron look. Yeah, it's yeah. really great. And See you didn't have to do any extra work to get it. Yeah. It's just part of your block. <laughs> so yeah, let's set this in and show, show how, how this it fits. fits. So that it just sits right like this and it's just four across by four down. And like Natalie mentioned earlier, you could very easily, you know, get a layer cake or a few more charm packs and make this yeah. as big as you wanted. So it comes together really fast. I love that. It's All so right, pretty. thanks well, that guys. that was easy so, and fun. Nat, you're up next. All right. <laughs> Well, I am really excited to teach you how to make this quilt. I love it. I'm calling it Blooming Stars because there's a star in the center and then it just kind of looks like a burst, it's like beautiful, a, a pretty Nat. little bloom. It's gorgeous. I love and the I love the fabric line. It's got these beautiful cottage roses and all this fun it little lemons. And then there's a little bit of shimmer in it. It's, just, it's, it's so, so subtle. fun. I love yeah. that it's not a lot. It's just a little. Yes. And it has just, an, just enough bold colors to make it like pop but then it's also very soft and I love sweet, it like a little let's tea show party. the backing because it's so cute oh, so yes. yes this is the backing oh. I used and it has this really fun lemon print all the lemons I love it so and so we use cute. the same quilting pattern yes and so the quilting pattern is time warp time warp is one of our newer modern patterns that we've just got in machine quilting we've been working on freshening up all of our patterns and adding fun things so but it know. looks a little and different. and this one this one if you'll notice is actually going sideways it's right. uh, horizontal so it was quilted the same way on the machine yes. but then you just turn the quilt yeah uh -huh. and it's sideways so yeah yeah I love it. exactly great idea. So it looks great almost looks like ocean waves that yes. direction it's yeah. so fun and so it's 69 square and um, if you wanted to make yours bigger you absolutely could it's a great quilt and the blocks are so fun and easy to make all right so to make the quilt you're going to need one packet of 10 inch squares and I've used Rose Lemonade by Wishwell for Robert Kaufman. You'll need one roll of two and a half inch strips and one and a quarter yards of additional background and sashing yardage, a yard and a half for your outer border, and that includes your cornerstones. And then for your backing, you'll need four and a half yards unless you use a 108, and then you'll need two and a quarter yards of a 108. Perfect. Perfect. So this is the block. It's my spin on the quatrefoil. And I'm really excited to show you guys how it's done because it's a lot easier than it looks. And, but it's quite a spin, isn't it? It, it is a spin. I, I, I don't think that there. it's that different, but... I totally see how you got there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so you are going to need to select two matching prints. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how these are cut because you're gonna get all of your pieces from these two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off a four and a half inch strip. And then I'm gonna cut this down into four, four and a half inch squares. Because you have both layers stacked up there. Yes, yep. yep. This just saves me a little bit of cutting. All right, so these four squares are going to make up these four blocks right there in the in the middles. Okay. So if you had if you had a layer cake that didn't have two matchers, I would do I would do these four out of your one print and then um, the five that make up this cross section out of your other print. Okay. And that's how I would mix them up. I love oh, it. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. So then this one, we're going to separate these two now and cut one more four and a half inch square for our middle. And that just stays 
as it is. That doesn't get any special treatment. I think it makes, that sounds like it makes it feel a little bad. Yeah, just, it's still not special. special. He is perfect just the <laughs> he way is he still is. Special. Just the way he is. <laughs> okay, so that is our fifth square, and that goes in the middle. This I'm going to cut into two and a half inch strips. I love it when you can, just by making cuts, you do Get a all your different. pieces. And yeah. then these are also and two and a half through. inch strips. Okay. All right, so from our background, we're going to need um, several two and a half inch squares. All the background can be in two and a half inch strips, and then you'll need a, a bunch of two and a half inch squares and strips. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. So, but the first thing we're gonna do is sew these strips to this strip. Okay. And we're gonna sew them all straight down the side. Mm hmm Okay. You got it. Actually, we're gonna just do the one. We're just gonna do the one strip to the white okay. first. Okay, just one of the long ones. That's right. Okay. Help, <laughs> Help with that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, then we're gonna trim this off. Oops, that go. guy's a, a little bit long. We're going to cut this into two and a half inch segments. Hold those back for a minute. Just doing our little two and a half inch squares here. Do you want me to iron you them open? Press those Oops, open. Sorry, I was trying to move the extra piece out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Pulled it from you. Yep. So we'll get all four little two and a half inch segments out of this one initial strip. Perfect. Right. And then? And then they get <laughs> stitched to the rest of these there we um, go. print strips. So it doesn't really matter which direction they go, but I tried to keep mine all going the same way. Okay. All that does is it would just change whether your long strip is this way or that way. Okay. And ultimately it doesn't matter. Right. Well, because you're turning at every corner anyway, right? Exactly. Okay. So. Great. So one each for these little guys. And they're, they are admittedly a little bit longer, but it doesn't make sense to cut them down when you're going to cut them down again anyways. Right. So all those. And then this one, the other two just fit nicely right on there. I love it. So that is your Those really easy. great use of fabric. That's <laughs> really so great, great Nat. Fabric. Very little waste. I'll go ahead and give you guys these two. Yep, we'll get these trimmed and pressed open. Because mama needs a job. <laughs> That's right, gotta keep her busy. And these should stay four and a half. All right, so we have little squares that look just like that. It's kind of like, I mean, I guess you could make it into a little heart. Yeah. I'm gonna, eh, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave that little pink dudge on there. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. It will be fine. Okay. So at this point, we have all of these beautiful little squares and now what we're going to do is snowball these two corners okay and these are the corner blocks correct? these are the corner blocks we're making the little starry points okay do you have some more two and a half inch squares yes I actually we thought do these were like little tiny half square triangles so you're so just this is a very cool snowball way both of those okay this actually and we don't have to finish these three because i have some other ones made here okay so this whoops that guy. And this I'll is the block. This, around. this is the block we're making for our so corners. Cool. So pretty. And that's the hardest part of the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. So the middle stays the same. We'll just trim these off and press them back. 
So Sandy Gervais was here teaching this week, and she calls these connector blocks. Oh, the oh. little yeah, the and, little snowballs? And I was like, what is a connector block? And she's like, oh, it's when you put a corner on and do that. And I said, oh, I call that snowballing. <laughs> That's and interesting. She's like, she's like, yeah, everybody, you know, everybody has a different name for things. I love that. That's so interesting. All right. Okay, so now we're going to do these four blocks, and they just get snowballed on all four corners. And because they're four and a half and our squares are two and a half, they overlap, giving you a nice um, quarter inch so you don't lose the point. Okay. All and right. so this is all you've done here compared to the regular quadrifold. Mm -hmm. you know, the original already had these two, and I just added, added two, two at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it is very similar to our quadrifoil star, yeah. except for these outer corners I changed into little, um, kind of like a bear paw. Yeah. Um, sort of. I'm not sure exactly what that block is called. Maybe somebody out there knows, <laughs> but it's... Uh, yeah, it's really not that different. All right. But it gives it a completely new look, it's, I think. It's beautiful. It's just a bear with only with only two parts, you know, two yep. two hands, two fingers on his hand. Mm -hmm. The bear the bear peace sign. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So we'll yep. do opposites. So you do your your two opposite corners and you can draw the line. We're sewing right on the line. Then you trim and flip and press. There we go. And Put your other two opposite corners on. I love that you were able to get all of these pieces out of two squares. Mm -hmm. Such a great use of fabric. Yeah, I thought so too. I well, was pretty happy with how it block. turned out. It's a beautiful oh, block. Two, yeah. right. two, two more corners, more. two more squares. Okay. And then we will put this whole thing together. Well, and this is kind of uh, easy to remember because it's like, Four and a half, two and a half. That's okay. what you're working with on the whole. The whole thing. The whole thing. Four and a half and two and a half. That's right. I love things like that. It helps me <laughs> yes. keep, it, yes. keep it straight. Yeah. Now I will suggest because there's so many corners added, you might want to go through and check and just make sure that they all are in your four and a half range. Ish. If they're not, just square your little yeah. corners. It should match up pretty easily because you don't really have like a lot of points to watch. You just have some areas that connect. Um, but even if they're off a little bit, it's not going to show up that much. So it's not a super stressful quilt to make, but it can get out of whack if, you're, if your squares are a little bit big or small or if, you know, the little corner kind of curved out. Something yeah, like it is that. interesting how you, you'll just be sewing on the line and still you'll look at it and you'll be like, what happened there? Yeah. Wonky. Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we'll start with our center. And then we'll add our blocks that make up um, our the, petals, which are now diamonds. The petals, which are now diamonds. <laughs> yes. So we've got these ones here. And then our little corners come in. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Whoops. Not there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a we whole different We need a corner quilt. petal. Yes. A little... That is so pretty. It's gorgeous. So there, and then we can sew that together. I love it. Very cool. All right, so should we do it like that? Sure. You can do it your right-handed way too, you know. It's okay. That's all right. It we're, all works out. We're going with it. Oh, we got some extra. Oops. The seam is trying to fight me. So these blocks are um, 12 and a half unfinished, and when you're making your sashing strips, just Cut them all 12 and a half, and then add, I did my, um, I always do my sashing and cornerstones horizontally, because then I can just sew the, the, row the together. strip on and then yeah. sew the row. Very That's cool. typically how I do it. That's very cool. And it's, again, they're all 12, or two and a half inches wide by 12 and a half, um, and then the cornerstones are two and a half squares that just, I just used the same border fabric because I thought it looked cool. Mm -hmm. I easily, there's only nine of them, so you easily could have used you know, a, a variety of different squares left over from your layer cake because there are a few fabrics left over. This but just looks so watercolor to me. It's just beautiful. so pretty. It is. I love it's it. really pretty. I love, love, love it. I'm adding this last set. And due to the the way that I wanted to put the squares together where I had matching colors, I ended up getting 12 blocks. So it is four by four. 
Sorry. It's all right. Quilt math. Quilt math is hard. 16, 16 blocks. blocks. Yes. Actually, quilt math is not hard for now. Four That's times a... four is 16. I was get. I got hung up on the 12 and a half inch square and... <clears throat> You're fine. Sorry about that. That's all right. 16 blocks. 16 total. So 16 times two is 36. 32. 32. <laughs> Why so are good. we doing so more good. math? Wait, wait. <laughs> so 32 is almost the use of a full layer cake. That's what I was getting at. Oh. You know. Yeah, there's there's just not a very few many left squares over. left over, um, but but the ones in this in this uh, pack were all very very light also, uh -huh. and I didn't think that they would stand out against my white no, background. You want some so that's why I left these ones out. You definitely want um, contrast. Also, I'm not sure. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that they would they would be. Um, Worth that your you could time. see them. That yeah, they yeah. would pop up. That they would pop out. Some of these are very pastel. And, uh, well, and, and they're beautiful. Even they really mine, are. I think I used 32 squares with mine, and there were some white squares and black squares in theirs, and I just pulled those out. <laughs> Will you press that for me? So really that quick? I could um, so that I could just use the bright ones. Yeah. So beautiful. Very pretty. It, it would, I almost did a dark background with it because just different, a different color. Yeah. But, um, there we go. Because I think sometimes those look so beautiful. All right. So this is how it looks in the quilt. It's gorgeous. It's it looks perfect. 12 and a half inch square. So pretty. Got four across by four down, two and a half inch sashing with two and a half inch square cornerstones. I have a little two and a half inch border and my outer border is five inches. And again, this backing is this beautiful it's a lemon so print pretty. that I just love so much. I love lemons, so really you can't go print. wrong with that. Can't no. go wrong. <laughs> it's a great picnic size yes. or it looks lap like quilt. summertime. Yeah. It does look like summertime. No. So fun. So I hope you enjoyed that. So this was really a fun day, wasn't it? It was. All the different things you can do with a quadrifoil quilt. My mm -hmm. quilt's so big, I can cozy up in it. It's perfect. <laughs> Nap time. Three amazing new ideas, all based on this original quadrifoil. <laughs> and we hope you enjoyed this triple play from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And I am here with Natalie and with Misty. And we hope you enjoyed watching our latest triple play. You can find us together on the third Friday of each month as we hit another tutorial out of the park. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified each time we release a new video. See you next time.